All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, for today, my name is Christian Kiss. I'm a field application staff scientist uh, within our sample prep group, and uh, the title for today is going to be Prep for the Future. The agenda, we're going to focus on a couple of things here. All right, let me get my glasses on so I can see what I'm looking at. Um, the agenda for today is going to be covering the common and costly issues associated with sample prep. Uh, many of you might be familiar with these already. Uh, the advantages of automating that sample prep in order to get around those challenges. And then using the Kingfisher Apex automated purification system that we have to help in that process. And then also talk about some new products that we have coming out as part of that purification and also as a representation of our green initiative to make these products safer for the environment. And at the end, we'll have a little bit of Q&A if you have any questions. So in terms of the costly problems for sample prep, we generally focus on two different things. It's going to be user time consumption and inconsistent results. Now, I know a long time ago when I was in graduate school, I did everything manually, and a lot of you may still do that. Uh, it took me about, 20, or about an hour to do 20 samples, and it was a very tedious process. Uh, maybe people are still doing that, but these days, a lot of times people are needing to do a lot more samples. And you can see how an hour's worth of time for 20 samples will start eating into that precious lab resources and time in order to do just that when there's so many other things that need to be done in a lab. So user time consumption is an issue. Inconsistent results, well, especially when you're doing things manually, um, we're all humans, right? We make mistakes in the way that we do things. So obviously having inconsistent results in the sample prep portion of the workflow can be problematic because if we can't trust the material that we purify, we can't trust putting that into a downstream application and getting results that we can also um, rely on, right? So these are the two main issues. And so when we talk about automating and going through high throughput workflow, uh, we really want three key benefits from this process. We want to maximize our throughput, our flexibility, and our consistency in being able to do this. And so if we look at consistency, obviously when we do purification, if you can run a set of samples today or later on in the afternoon or even uh, tomorrow or next week and still be able to get the same kind of results in downstream no matter when or how often you're running that same sample set, that's really going to be a benefit for everybody uh, with uh, the tests that you're going to be doing. So obviously we want to reduce the variability between our runs. And of course, with the range of target types, we want to make sure we can do this across different sample types too, and not just one. As labs grow and we work at different applications, uh, we're going to be looking at different sample types and processing those, and we need to trust everything. With significant time savings, uh, we obviously want a faster time to uh, answer, uh, get answers, right? And especially if we're doing not just hundreds, but thousands of samples, we can't do things manual anymore. So we need to be able to do that in a very short amount of time. Um, and of course, that all comes down to being able to make decisions sooner too. We don't want that three day or one week turnaround. We'd rather purify that sample and then be able to go into that downstream right away with that. And of course, if you increase your consistency and you save time in doing it, that also means better productivity. Being able to do more in the lab. So not only if you have a solution for high throughput, but it's also scalable and being able to different quantities and different applications, you can see where the benefit for that lies. And obviously, that means higher volumes of different clinical samples, uh, in different cases, and being able to do this in a very small footprint also matters too. So as we look at sample prep, it's really part of a large workflow, and that might mean collecting a sample, and sometimes this requires uh, different types of tubes or collection devices. An example of a product we have would be the Specimax, where we collect saliva in these tubes. And whether you want to do it in a raw format because you're going to immediately process or you need to store those and preserve those samples, we have uh, different types of Specimax products to be able to do that for the saliva collection. But after that, we want to process samples. And at Thermo Fisher, we've got a large line of MagMax kits to be able to do that for nucleic acid. Um, the span range of being able to do DNA, RNA, total nucleic acid. We'll talk a little more about those. Uh, but the kits offer box solutions, so it also makes it easy to get going on these things. 
And then, of course, we need instrumentation to do the high throughput. And we have a long history of Kingfisher instruments since 1999, so it's a very proven uh, instrument and methodology to be able to do this. And our newest one, the Apex, which we'll talk a little more about as well, automates this magnetic bead-based chemistry process to simplify everything, to get you faster results and uh, more reproducible as well. And of course, after the sample prep workflow, there's downstream applications. Obviously, we only have the uh, Quant Studio QPCR system here, but there's such a wide variety of things that you can go into that it really matters how your sample prep looks. So how, how does uh, the Kingfisher system actually work? Well, when you look at purification, there's generally three different ways of doing things. You can use column-based methods. We're really just a single-pass system. Um, you know, there's column clogging, and uh, it can be a very manual type of process. So in a lot of cases, it's just not very effective and does lend itself to the potential, at least, for day-to-day, person-to-person variability. And then we can move to magnetic bead types of processing, right? And we can do that through liquid movement, which it's a little better than columns because you can shake and mix your tube, your tube, and so that enhances the process. Um, but, you know, how you're pipetting solutions in and out, you could either lose some of your sample by pulling out beads or leaving contaminants behind that stay to the end. And so really the best method for working with magnetic beads is a bead movement process, and that's what the kingfishers do. We bind our target with the beads. Instead of pulling those beads down with a magnet, we're going to have a magnet on the instrument that collects those beads and move those from step to step to do the processing. And this is all done in conjunction with a plastic tip comb to protect the magnet and your sample, but that plastic tip comb can also be used as a plunger to thoroughly mix your samples. And so keeping this process simple where we simply let go, mix, and collect your beads really does lend itself to an easy um, uh, workflow. Um, and it gives you good purification and yield in the process. And the nice thing is when you automate like this too, everything is done on a specific set of instructions or a script that's executed. And so your reproducibility and consistency is now maintained over types, other types of methods that you may utilize for that. And of course, once you purify, um, it's really agnostic to the workflow. If you need to purify, we can go into all types of downstream applications, cancer research and genomics, uh, infectious disease. We've seen a lot of that in the last few years, uh, identifying pathogens. Related to that would be surveillance, like wastewater surveillance, uh, being able to detect pathogens before they uh, become problematic, uh, for example, at universities. And then a lot of protein work, again, all that can be bead-based as well, too, and we can put that on the Kingfisher to automate those workflows. And we do this on an instrument called the Kingfisher Apex. Uh, again, long history of doing these things. Uh, the Apex is our current modern instrument for high throughput. We have 96 and 24 formats, so it's what I call our low volume and high volume formats. Uh, low volume, things like tissues, small blood uh, cells, and then high volume would be like high volume blood, plasma, saliva, and things like that. Um, the Apex is a third generation model. Um, some of you may be familiar with our Kingfisher Flex that this was based on. It does things the same way. The eight spot turntable, each plate represents a step in the process, uh, being sample, wash, elution, and so forth. And you've got a magnetic head where all the active processing is done. The enhancements to this instrument are that it can now have two magnetic heads. So if you do both types of high and low volume applications, you don't have to swap those things around. The multiple heat blocks match these. Uh, with the heat block, we've also added a cooling function. So if you need to do heat for lysis and elution, and now you also need to do cooling to store your samples at the end because you can't get back right away, you can do that. Or sometimes protein applications require cooler temperatures too. Um, the barcode scanning tracks your plastics. It also tracks lot numbers, so that's kind of easier for us to troubleshoot. Um, it also scans the parts so the instrument knows what's on there and can put them in the right position or ask you to install those. Uh, UV lights, so you can decontaminate your instrument. You know, if you work with uh, hazardous material like pathogens, obviously it would be nice to be able to do that after each of these runs. 
We still have the same 96 and 24 formats, but in addition to eluting into regular plates, we've added the capability to elute into storage tubes. And this is a nice format because you can now pull out individual tubes to make it a little easier to work with instead of just storing whole plates. Um, and then we have a nice touchscreen format to make it more modern. Um, you don't have to have a computer to run anything separate. All the mechanics, the operation, and even the script writing. If you have to modify or create your own custom protocol, uh, the software is fully embedded onto the unit, so you can now do that. And that's what makes the Kingfishers also a nice system, is not only can you run box-validated kits, but you can also customize and create your own applications on the unit. And so when we talk about the Kingfisher being the center of the processing, uh, you know, it might involve some lysis, but the typical process is binding, doing some washing, and eluting, right? And if we look at different types of liquid biological samples, as long as you have that magnetic bead-based chemistry and the MagMax kits we have are great for this, we can work with blood or uh, swab samples, saliva, urine, right? All these liquid samples um, just require the right chemistry to get your nucleic acid off of this. And on the other side, different solid samples, uh, stool samples, cells and tissues, yeah, we work with all of that. We have the kits for those items as well. And then things like FFPE, you know, if you want to isolate DNA or RNA or even total nucleic acid, uh, our FFPE kit is great because you no longer have to split your sample. You can actually get both DNA and RNA off of the same sample sequentially. So you're not losing half of your sample right off the bat, and FFPE can be pretty precious to start with. And then different application areas like food safety, right? Maybe testing for pathogens in your samples, but also in uh, animal health uh, for farming. Um, they can use uh, kingfishers to isolate samples for genotyping. And then related to that, agriculture as well, where you might need to do some plant or soil analysis. Uh, maybe you're doing, again, genotyping, or you need to uh, analyze what kind of pathogens are in the soil so you know whether to use pesticides or what pesticides to use uh, more efficiently in that process. And in terms of the kits, like I said, we have a very wide variety of kits to use on the Kingfisher. Uh, for DNA, we have a genomic DNA that's kind of an all-purpose uh, for blood and tissue and cells, all types of samples. And then there's a cell-free DNA kit for getting DNA from plasma. RNA, we can get total RNA, and a lot of times that includes the microRNAs as well, because there are a lot of studies using those too. And if you just need to do messenger RNA purification, we also have kits available for that too. Total nucleic acid, you know, we talked about FFPE and being able to do that as well as the individuals. Our pathogen kits are total nucleic acid. And being able to customize, if you just want DNA or RNA off of those, we can make field modifications for those things too. And of course, total nucleic acid for plasma if you don't want just the DNA off of there. On the protein side, we've got a large line of Dynabeads and Pierce products. Uh, these are protein A, protein G related, or we can modify them with antibodies to capture specific targets of interest to do that purification. And then there's other modifications like tags. Uh, maybe we need to work with his tag or mic tag or flag tag. Uh, and then also working with biotinylated molecules and using streptavidin beads. Related to proteins are going to be much larger molecules or um, biological products like whole cells. Uh, maybe we need to isolate T cells from blood as an example. We can target T cells specifically because of those molecules on the surface and we can do enrichment or depletion assays uh, with those things. Uh, lately, exosome research has been uh, becoming a little more uh, widely done. Uh, we can target certain CD molecules on the exosomes and isolate those for further um, analysis, and then T-cell activation. Um, you know, T-cells are activated through their CD28 and CD3 molecules. We can do that through beads, activate those T-cells, and then pull that out so we can now do T-cell expansion without the beads being present. All of this stuff can be magnetic bead-based, and we can do on the Kingfisher. And of course, downstream, um, doesn't really matter. The purity is generally great for all those things, whether it's sequencing, different types of qPCR, or for protein work, uh, even mass spectrometry. So let's change gears just a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk about two products specific to this that we're coming out with. One is the charge switch no-spin plasmid purification. 
if you think about plasma purification, we're basically growing up bacteria, and we got a lysome, and we got all that white precipitate in there. So it generally becomes a little challenging, especially when you want to automate something like that. And so the charge switch no spin kit uh, is designed to help uh, automate that process by using, first of all, no centrifugation in the process. And we do this using a two bead system. The first beads are gonna bind your bacteria, and then we do the lysis, so all that material stays uh, bound to the beads and we can pull out generally what was pre for that white precipitate. And now we can introduce a second bead set to bind the plasmid and do that purification. So all of this is now done on the instrument. Um, and you can, of course, do this through liquid handlers as well. On uh, Kingfisher systems, this can be done in about 30 minutes. We've got different kits in a 96 format, but they can also be customized to bulk. Uh, you would just have to talk to our sales reps for this. But in terms of the green initiative, this is a 100% water-based uh, chemistry. And so no ethanols, no chaotropic salts, no organics. And this is what makes this a more environmentally friendly product. And you can see traditionally, um, this has been done through uh, filtration methods. If you compare the two, the filtration methods are just more complicated. Uh, they involve the centrifugation, vacuum filtration, things can get clogged, so it just becomes a little less reliable overall. Because of the process, it can also take twice as long than if you're working with magnetic beads on an instrument. So it's a much faster process to do this. Yield's pretty comparable, but because we're not losing anything on the filtration, we can potentially get a little better than that. Low endotoxins, pretty similar, but if you look at a filtration process, you're introducing shear forces that can sometimes nick or linearize that plasmid. And we know that being able to do transfections usually requires super coiled plasmids, and um, we don't disrupt that structure when we're working with beads on that technology. Beads are obviously automation friendly, and so it's going to require overall less equipment than it would when you're trying to do filtration, which requires centrifugations, maybe vacuums, vortex, and other pieces of equipment. And then the second product that we're, we've come out with is the Dynagreen Magnetic Beads for Immunoprecipitation. Um, this is a sustainable product, so we don't produce this with microplastics. But we still maintain the legacy of the Dyna Beads uh, purification and quality, smooth surface to eliminate a lot of the non-specific binding. That means you're only going to capture the material that you want. But the new little popcorn shape of these things increases the, cure, the surface area of these beads. So now you're also going to be able to increase the yield over what we would have been able to do with uh, our other DynaBeads products. So high performance, yield, and purity is what we were going with. And the fact that it is a greener product is also beneficial for our environment. And these, of course, come in different formats, too. But when looking at that, it's a sustainable science. So from using uh, non-microplastics to the whole manufacturing, which is energy efficient process, reduced water consumption, and then the use of non-hazardous chemicals to actually create these beads to the, uh, you know, the consumer with recycled packaging or offering PDF uh, documents instead of paper. Uh, all of this is going to be environmentally friendly. And this is guaranteed by our ACT label and Thermal Fisher Greenleaf to show you the impact or the low impact on the environment. And so no matter what you're looking to process, we do have a very high quality technical support from our customer service lines to field application scientists like myself, uh, where we can assist with troubleshooting or method development. And our sales reps are also very knowledgeable about the products. Uh, but we have a, a wide variety of ways to help you with your needs in sample prep automation. So that's uh, it for me on this. Uh, I invite you to come see us at booth 1411-1411. Uh, we do have some promotions on our sample prep products, so feel free to ask us about that. Uh, we'd like to help everybody get uh, started on sample prep, or if you're already there, at least help you in that process to get more done. So I'll take any questions if there are any.
so the question was with FFPE uh, in being preserved in that uh, from, uh, uh, fixed formaldehyde stuff, the paraffin embedded, right? Yeah, you do have to release that uh, nucleic acid from that material. Um, I mean, old school is organics, but they've got safer material um, that you can work with. Um, but we also have things called autolist tubes. And uh, those basically what you would do is digest your tissue in a protonase K buffer in an autolist tube. And you can separate those two, spin them down, and the liquid that you spin down is what you take now directly to processing on the kingfisher. So it kind of takes care of the deparaffinization process, and it's like literally 95% hands off. Yeah, you always have to deparaffinize, whether you do it through whatever process or the autolist tubes, which, by the way, can be automated as well. The results will be the same. Yeah, it's very efficient. All right, any other questions? Awesome. Thank you for your time. I appreciate your attendance.